Well, folks, I found it. Been digging around in this bin for the last 10 years, so I was bound to come across it eventually, I guess. But on Tuesday, I finally found the dumbest ever argument for the existence of God. I saw it as a comment on Facebook, and it was one of those things where I started to write a response, and then I decided, you know, this asshole isn't worth it. And then I changed my mind, and I started to write a different response, and then I decided that that was going to get me thrown in Facebook jail. And so I started writing a different response, and that eventually just became a diatribe. So here's the argument, and, and apologies that I can't quote it directly because I couldn't find the fucking post again when I, when I went to write this. But basically, an atheist I follow on Facebook said something about how gods are figments of our cultural imagination. And as part of his point, he mentions that gods only exist inside our heads. So fucking Uncle Frank chimes in to say, oh, yeah? Well, how do you reconcile that argument with your support of trans people? I, I, I know, I know, but stay with me or stay with Uncle Frank anyway, because then he adds that the only evidence that one's gender identity might not match the one they were assigned at birth is inside their heads. Now, normally I wouldn't devote any time on the show to an argument this stupid if it didn't at least come from some well-known apologist or somebody that wields actual power in society. This is just Uncle Frank. But two things drew me to it. One was the fact that the phrasing made it look like he was yanking it off of some questions to stump woke atheists with website. And I feel like we might see it again. But the other was just how much it gives away the game. So first, let's dismiss the argument itself. Not that you really need me to. This argument could also be used to deny the existence of, say, other people being hungry. Right. So to, <laughs> to the extent that there's any problem here at all, it's the problem of hard solipsism. Right. The, the fact that I can't logically prove that I'm not just a brain in a jar being convinced that the world exists by some outside force. But of course, you can't argue with somebody about hard solipsism because literally nothing can follow if we accept the premise. Right. But that's not the argument he's making. Of course, the argument he's making is basically all the things I can't hold in my hand are equally non-existent. I mean, look, when you're stress testing an argument, the first thing that you have to do is look for substitutions that would invalidate it. Right. And and. Thought itself invalidates this one. Just the act of thinking about that substitution would invalidate it. I mean, if, if we're discounting one's own assertions, which we necessarily are, right, there's no evidence that you're thinking outside of your own head. Hell, I can't even accept your premise if I want to because there's no evidence that I accept it outside of my own head other than my, my inadmissible assertion, right? But of course, he never tried to stress test his argument, or, or rather, I'm sorry, he was incapable of stress testing it. Not because he was stupid, though all evidence suggests that he was, but because religion and the justification of bigotry are so intertwined in his head now that, but what about I'm a bigot, seems like a sound argument in favor of God's existence to him. Now, this is the byproduct of two codependent trends. The first, of course, is the increasing effort to legally protect discrimination behind the veil of religion. The other one, or you might even say the, the, the means to the first one, is to so thoroughly abuse the concept of logic as it applies to religion that one's assertions can't really be invalidated. After all, how do you respond to Uncle Frank's idiotic challenge here? In a lot of ways, it's too dumb to refute. Like you could point out the shit that I just said about how his argument would invalidate the concept of personal preferences or intentions or thoughts themselves. But if that kind of appeal to logic was going to sway him, it would have swayed him before you pointed it out. He already knew about thought. To even regurgitate this argument, you have to entirely divorce yourself from any trapping of logic except the linguistic ones. And once you do that, you can put any damn thing you want after the therefore. 